Okay, so now guys, if you can spend two months looking up stats for fantasy football, you can spend an hour or two in the kitchen cooking your significant other a really good meal. This is going to be so easy, anybody can do it. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to chop everything up. We're going to start with the bacon and the vegetables um, and cut the corn off the cob. And this is the pot we're going to be using. This is our cast iron um, uh, stock pot. And once we get this all chopped up, we're going to render the bacon, sweat the onions and the vegetables in the bacon fat, and that will start the process. Also, as I'm chopping the garlic, I've got a little salt on the board too. That will, after I'm done, let me crush it and act as a little grinder on there. So just add a little salt to it. It'll chop and crush perfectly. Okay, so here's a little tip for you. I've chopped all the uh, onion, celery, and carrots with um, the chop, not the chives, but the green onions, and I put them in a little bowl. The garlic I'm doing separate. You don't want to put the, when you're sweating the mirepoix, they call it, I don't like putting the garlic in there because garlic has a tendency to burn. I put that in after the vegetables are sweated. So sweating down what I'm doing, is not having it on high heat, having it on a medium low heat until they get the onions um, and vegetables turn a little translucent. You don't want them burnt, you don't want them crispy, you just want them sweated down so you sweat the moisture out of them. I need to tell you what this is. I gotta uh, do a shout out. Um, Frugal Gourmet is where I, uh, who I learned to cook from. A uh, gentleman that was on TV years and years ago this is a Turkish coffee mill. He used this as a pepper grinder, and my wife got this for me um, for our anniversary. I think it had been our maybe third or fourth anniversary, so 25 years ago almost, and I've been using it ever since. If you can find a Turkish coffee, coffee grinder like this, makes an awesome pepper mill. All right, so the herbs are in now. Okay, so the herbs are in now. What I'm doing is I'm adding the garlic. Give it a quick stir around in there. And then I'll add the wine. I'm using the La Crema um, Chardonnay. Don't put any, any wine in your food that you wouldn't drink. And this, all this is going to do is deglaze the pan, get all the bits and pieces off the bottom. Use about a half a cup of uh, the wine. All right, so I went ahead and added the seafood stock into the pot, brought it to a boil. And what I'm gonna do now is just toss in the potatoes, parboiled potatoes, and the corn right off the cob. Make sure you get everything from the corn, all that good milk, that's a good starch that'll bring this, thicken this all together. Okay, so what we have here, all the vegetables are, have been simmered for about 10 minutes, the potatoes and the corn and with all the vegetables in the stock. Now comes the part, Sitka salmon. This is where we get all of our fish from, all of our seafood. This is what's going to make this chowder. This is gonna go in, pot simmering, and you do not want to, this to simmer very long. You just want this in there for the last maybe four or five minutes of the cooking, and that's it. Okay, so now to finish it off, the salmon's been uh, simmering for about three, four minutes. Kerrygold butter. I'm gonna put in a, just a little block of the Kerrygold butter. This is gonna give it the real rich creaminess. And stir that in real quick.
and then about a cup of half and half. Now it is New England chowder. And now for the finished product, Sitka salmon, corn and potato chowder. Mmm, that's good. Our soup.